God kväll. Idag blir det en liten extra stream på grund av att jag är bortrest och inte kan streama imorgon. Och I am now switching to English because parts 1 and 2 of this project was made in English and of course I should be continuing doing that. Uh, so, uh, where we left off last was that we had got um, our ops working and uh, the only thing I've done since then is I have uh, made a minor few changes. I'm not quite sure uh, what in some of the scripts and I have replaced the power-up art and that's basically it and I have prepared our characters. Uh, so if you have watched the previous sessions, uh, It should be close enough to so um, to to just continue from there, basically. So uh, in this part, uh, part three, we are doing a first step of getting multiplayer to work. Uh, so there's going to be some build times when I'm testing stuff out, uh, and it's basically this is basically for my students uh, to allow them to catch up uh, um, before next lesson, basically. Uh, so let's uh, let's get to it. Uh, so we have the player uh, which we're actually going to remove from the game uh, right now it's a prefab so we are uh, spawning it later the game controller is gonna uh, hold all our network stuff as well so we're starting by adding a network manager and a network uh, manager HUD so we can um, access the basic functions and if we hit play now we see that we have a few new uh, buttons here that we can Connect. Uh, and if you're testing locally, you can just use localhost um, to test with. And you have one copy running in the editor, and you build the game to have a second copy running. And um, we need to be able to spawn our prefab, so we need to add our prefab here. But before we can do that, we need to add some components to our player. We need to add a network identity. Uh, and it's a local player authority, meaning that the uh, player uh, on the local computer is controlling this asset. And we need a network transform. Uh, that is basically um, the network script that keeps the transform component up to date uh, over the network. So now when we have added that, we can add the player to player prefab in the spawn. Uh, in the network manager spawn info. Uh, yes, so if we hit play now and we hit host to start the game, we get a player that's stuck down here because he spawns at 000, zero and we want him to spawn in the middle for testing purposes. So uh, let's open the player controller and make some adjustments. and here we go yes uh, so this is the play controller and in the start function we simply go uh, transform that position equals new vector 3 and the middle of the screen uh, since i've done this before uh, i happen to know that it's uh, 10 6 this is the coordinates basically uh, for the center position so we move it to the middle of the screen Uh, since we have this script open, we're gonna add some network uh, related code as well, starting by adding the uh, using unity and unity engine dot networking. Uh, and this um, library allows us to inherit from network behavior. And network behavior is um, Uh, derived from uh, the mono behavior so everything that's in mono behavior is in network behavior so start and update and everything will continue working as normal uh, but we get a few more things to play around with so we can uh, check if uh, is local player so if it's not the local player then we should not take any input we should not run update at all so we will just return here So uh, only the local player, which uh, the networking system sets up, basically the identity controller, uh, will run 
this code, all other uh, instances will return here and not run the rest of the update function. So this is the basics for the player controller. And I think we now should be able to test this and see that we have everything working so far. So uh, for that, we need to uh, build the game. I'm just gonna quickly check my build settings. So I'm building a standalone and the player settings, uh, I want to make maybe make some uh, changes. For instance, I only want 69 uh, aspect ratio. Yeah, and I think the rest, the rest of the settings will be fine for now. So I build the game and I usually do that in a new bin folder. Not, so not to get stuff mixed up with the rest of the project. And I will call this Bomberman. So we build the game, we get uh, this window and we can just play the game. Now we can start the one as well so this one will be the host so I press the host button this one will be the client so I press the client button and they are spawning inside each other but uh, we have two players moving around and if I place this windows like this you can see that when I move uh, one of them the other one moves as well uh, I'm not gonna try if I try to place a bomb then I place a bomb for both players and only on the uh, client, the one who pressed it, and now you see we have a desync already, like here we have both players remaining, and here we only have one, and the boxes and everything does not line up. So we must make sure that um, only the player can spawn his own bombs, and that bombs must be reflected to the server as well. Uh, but we have movement up and running, and that's, that's a good start. Uh, one thing I noticed directly is that we have collision between the player and we don't want that because uh, the player should be able to stand in the same square. So uh, I select the player and I create a new layer with add layer and I name the layer layers. Uh, I'm sorry if that was a bit, a bit quick, I just realized that. So here under layer we have add layer that was what I pressed and then once we have added it we can now select it so the player is now in the layer players and what that means is that we can change the physics settings and make sure that players can't collide with other players simply by going edit uh, project settings physics 2d and here we have a matrix over which layer can collide with which layer so we look at players where it intersect players and simply say those layers can no longer collide. So for instance, if we don't want the UI being able to collide with water, we can simply unbox the, uh, uncheck that box. Um, yes, so that is for collision between uh, certain objects. Uh, yeah, nothing has changed. Let's wait with testing for now. Uh, so let's get back to our prefab. Yes, we have fixed the player controller, but the bomb spawner works for every player when you hit space. All players plant a bomb. We don't want that. So let's go to the bomb script, bomb spawner script. And we are going to do the same thing uh, that we did for the player controller. We are going to be using Unity Engine Networking. Uh, we are going to inherit from network behavior. And we are going to abort the update method uh, if we are not the local player. So uh, as simple as that. And since we are here, we should get starting on uh, being able to drop bombs. And for that, we need to do a few things. Uh, first of all, we need to take this bomb spawning setting up thing and extract it into its own method. Uh, so I right click and choose quick action and extract method. So it's called extract method or refractor or something uh, similar to that. It's different depending on if you have uh, 2015 or 2013. It's also different in model beha behavior. 
but it's called something similar to it anyway, or Google if, if you can't find it. So we named this new uh, function cmd spawn bomb. And uh, the, the reason I name it cmd uh, for short for command in the beginning is that I'm going to tag this as a command. And this is something I need to do to let the network system know that this is something that can be uh, sent to and from the server. So um, here we also need to tell the network manager that we want to uh, create a network object. So we will type network manager dot spawn is not manager doesn't look like it it's something network at least but there is a lot of network stuff it would be network server dot spawn yeah this. Uh, so what do we want to spawn? We want to spawn this specific item. So um, we have created a new bomb. We make sure that it's a game object. We save it in this uh, variable and we make sure that the network server spawn the new bomb. And we need to make sure that the network server can spawn this specific game object. So Let's fix that now. Uh, on our bomb prefab, prefab bomb, then we must add a network uh, identity and we must add a network transform. And the network transform here does not need any send rate because we're going to spawn it and then it's going to take care of itself. It's not the local player authority and it's not server only. So I'll leave the rest as, as it is. Uh, so we go to the game controller and in the network manager we have a uh, registered spawnable prefabs. These are the items that can be spawned and this list is empty. So we hit the plus sign and then we have a nice slot to place the bomb. So uh, by uh, making the bomb uh, a network object, the fire does not need to be that. Um, the yeah, that, that's going to be an issue later when the fire kills the player, but then the player is going to tell, uh, tell the um, server that he actually died. And it's going to be in sync enough that that's probably not even going to be an issue, but we will tackle that later if that's the case. So we should not now be able to uh, plant bombs and only the player who uh, hit the key is going to be able to plant the bomb. But there is going to be a few issues, but we'll give it a try first. Okay, I have to build it first, then start. So, let's build. Oh, this computer is so much faster than the uh, one I use at uh, school. That's so, so nice. So, we have the host, we'll move it up here. We have the client, we'll move it down here. So, if the client now, I'm going to make sure you can see both of them. If the client places a bomb, he the bomb instantly explodes and he dies. And if the server plants a bomb, uh, yeah, then, yeah. So the player, the, the, um, the client, uh, the, the fuse is not passed through the network system right now. So the fuse is zero. So ex the, the very moment when someone places a bomb, the player explodes. So let's fi fix that next. Uh, so let's look at the bomb and the bomb has a script called bomb and this script also need to be a networks networking script. So let's add using unity engine dot networking. Let's inherit from network behavior. And we are going to put some attributes on firepower and on fuse. 
because the issue is that um, the bomb spawner here tells the bomb some information about uh, firepower and fuse, but uh, the spawned object does not care about those. Uh, so that it only gets set uh, for the player spawning the bomb. Everybody else uh, have the bomb spawn with zero fuse. So what we do is that we tell the game that this is going to be a uh, sync var. So that means that this variable is so important that you need to keep track of it uh, uh, over uh, between the server and between the client. So let's uh, do that for the uh, firepower and for the fuse. And let's try it again. So let's build it. And uh, yeah, remember to build it each time you have changed something. Otherwise, you have a client with a different uh, game than the than the, than the editor, basically. So let's play. Uh, the, uh, the editor is hosting. Uh, the client is joining. So uh, if this guy plays a bomb here and side, you can see that we now have basics of the game synced between the uh, between the two, two instances and if i do something here like if i try to go up to the uh, left side yeah let's stick arps and go up here and blow that one up and you can see that i'm in the same spot and i destroy the same same tiles and yeah, I thought this stream would be about half an hour, and I'm actually done in 15 minutes. That's uh, I'm I'm impressed with myself, but I have done this uh, three times the last week, so uh, it, no big big surprise that I know where all the errors are right now. So quite easy to fix. Uh, so this is the state uh, where we uh, left it last. No, it actually I think two more things that we need to fix. Uh, so let's stop it and close. One thing I did as well on the player was that in the player controller we added a new function and I'm really curious to see if that is now in the in this one. It is not. Okay. I yeah, it's not. So uh, this one will be, uh, we will need to do it public override void uh, to be able to do this. And on start local player. Uh, and what we do is that we go uh, get components, sprite renderer. Uh, and we will set the color to color dot red, and that means that the uh, local player for uh, the client or for the server uh, sees himself as red, and everybody else will be green because this code will only run on the local player. So it's basically this kind of thing. So we could put theoretically put if local player inside start and then do a bunch of stuff uh, but this is an alternate method of doing it uh, so i'm gonna take a quick look at my scripts to make sure that i have covered everything uh, this i did in two different steps when i uh, showed it in school just to clarify that we first extract the method not to complicate things and then we and name the method command so we got the, the the right type of method to spawn it over the network and yeah everything's good there uh, the fire works locally as it should uh, the bombs has its uses and everything and this should be basically the same as the second part of the series and the game controller no changes and power ups uh yeah no changes there either awesome uh so this is actually gonna be everything for today uh 
I haven't kept an eye on the chat. If anyone has asked anything, I'm sorry. It's just gonna have to wait. I might do a stream on uh, Sunday, um, uh, but I have not decided. It uh, depends on how tired I am when I get back from Stockholm and uh, yeah, uh, what else I need to do that day, basically. So I hope you have enjoyed this uh, clip. I know I talked very fast and uh, just go back, play it, slow it down. You have that option in YouTube. Don't forget to use it. And uh, yeah, uh, just add a comment if you're wondering anything and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, I'm just checking if there's anything else. Yeah, I've added some sound that's not connected to anything yet. That wasn't in the, the last version. And I'm I'm going to put up the final ver version of this game uh, somewhere easily accessible when it's uh, more complete. So I want to have uh, different players spawning in uh, different locations. I want them to have different art. I want to sync the power-ups. And I want uh, to be able to tell who won the game and then restart it without um, uh, without any issues. So that's maybe one or two lessons, depending on how it goes. We'll, we'll just have to see. Uh, so thank you very much for watching and uh, stay smart.